Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another edition of What is Mrs. Wallace Reading? Instead of telling you what I'm currently reading or what I just read, I'm going to tell you what I'm going to be reading. That's right. We're coming up at the end of the school year, which means we're all thinking about summer reading. So I've made a summer reading goal for myself. I want to read at least 10 books. So these are the 10 books that I'm going to start reading. Now these books, some of them are part of a series, some of them are standalones, some of them I've got at the book fair, some of them are books that I've been meaning to read and I'm finally gonna read them this summer. So I'm gonna take you on a quick tour of each one of these books and we'll see if any of them sound great and then you can read them too. So the first book I'm going to read is going to be The Wicked Queen, or King, sorry, The Wicked King, which is the second book in the particular series that comes with The Cruel Prince. The Cruel Prince is the first book. I did read that. I told you all about it in one of my other videos. This is the second book. I did black out some spoilers here because for those of you who really love fantasy books, who love books about fairies, you'll definitely love this series. So The Cruel Prince is the first book and then The Wicked King is the second book. So it's my goal to eventually read the whole series. But this summer, I'm gonna start with reading the second book in the series. So for those of you who have read the first book but haven't moved on to the second book, it continues on with uh, Jude. And again, it's in this world of fairy. So there's fairies involved, there's magic, but then there's also some things in the mortal world as well, All right? The next book that I'm plan hoping to read is The Midnight Hour. This is something that I did talk about when we did our book fair preview, and it is something I bought at the book fair. I'm gonna quick read this summary for you. When strange late night letters start arriving at home, Emily's parents set off to investigate. But when her parents disappear completely and Emily is left home alone to face the weird strangers that begin to appear at her door, she takes all of the clues at her disposal and makes for the place where the letters came from, the mysterious night post. What you'll discover is the secret world of the midnight hour, a Victorian London frozen in time full of magic and monsters. So if you're a fan of Harry Potter, if you're a fan of Stranger Things, this is kind of a mix of the two worlds. A lot of great fantasy elements here crossing over into this kind of parallel universe. So it's a great, uh, I've heard a lot of great reviews about it, so I'm very excited to read it. So I hope that you read it too. All right, the third book I'm going to read is something that was recommended for me by Miss Ford. If you remember in my last What is Mrs. Wallace reading video, she gave a kind of a review of some of the books that I read, as well as some of her own books. And this was one she didn't talk about, but she had talked about with me previously. So this is kind of like a Sherlock Holmesy type book. Miss Rook, I am not an Oculus, Jacoby said. I have a gift that allows me to see the truth where others see the illusion. And there are many illusions. All the world's a stage, as they say, and I seem to have the only seat in the house with a view behind the curtain. So if you are definitely a fan of Sherlock Holmes or Doctor Who, you'll love this series. I got great recommendations from this, from Miss Forbes. So I cannot wait to read this book. And it is the first book in a series. So that's a good thing for me because if I end up liking it, there's more books to come. This next book is something that's going to be on my quarantine bingo. I talked a little bit about this, a couple what is Mrs. Wallace reading goes. Uh, this particular one is Think mystery, thriller, but with a lot of drama. Chloe Whitaker is out for revenge. Last year, her best friend Monica's life was unceremoniously ruined by the most popular students at their high school. So this year, Chloe plans to take each and every one of them down. She's traded in her jeans and t-shirts for the latest designer clothes, erase anything on social media that would tie her to Monica and blow her cover, and carefully figure out how she will befriend members of the clique find out their deepest and darkest secrets and reveal them to the world. Chloe has the perfect plan, but there's one thing she didn't prepare for, and that's falling for someone she determined to destroy. The closer she gets to uncovering the secrets the in crowd is determined to cover up, the more she realizes that she is going to have to choose between betraying her oldest friend or the boy who's captured her heart. So a little bit of an enemy turned lover in this. So it is definitely a mystery, a lot of drama, but there's some romance in it as well. Everyone loves a good romance in a summer read. So clickbait is definitely on my list. Those of you who are fans of the Divergent series, Veronica Roth is the author and she has written an adult book. So she writes, you know, the Divergent series was young adult. This is just a regular old adult book. A dec decade ago near Chicago, five teenagers defeated the otherworldly enemy known as the Dark One. 
whose reign of terror brought widespread destruction and death, the seemingly unextraordinary teens, Sloan, Matt, Inez, Albie, and Esther, have been brought together by a clandestine government agency because one of them was fated to be the chosen one. Prophesied to save the world with the goal achieved, humankind celebrated the victors and began to mourn their lost loved ones. So she loves that world of dystopia, and this is definitely a dip into a kind of a dystopian, but a little bit of science fiction-y. So if you love Divergent, uh, I'm gonna hope that you'll love this one because I am so excited to read this. I love her as an author. I loved all of the short stories she wrote to go along with the Divergent series. So I'm curious to read her first realm into, you know, writing for adults, what that's going to be like. This next one has also been on my list for a long time, but I have yet to read it. Each month I get an owl crate. If you recall, I share some of the things with you in school, some of the other things. I get a book and then a lot of other fun things. So this came actually last year. So it's been sitting on my shelf for a really long time. And it's been in the library too. So some of you have read it as well. All sorcerers are evil. Elizabeth has known that as long as she has known anything. Raised as a foundling in one of Ostomir's great libraries, Elizabeth has grown up among the tools of sorcery. Magical grimoires that whisper on shelves and rattle beneath iron chains. If provoked, they transform into grotesque monsters of ink and leather. She hopes to become a warden, charged with protecting the kingdom from their power. So of course I'm gonna love this book because it's all about libraries. That's right, all this magic, all this sorcery happening in a library. So again, this has been on my list for a long time and it has been in the middle school library. So some of you may have already read it. This next book is another book in a series. So this uh, Aurora Burning is the second book. Aurora Rising is the first book. You see a picture down there. Um, and Aurora, Aurora Burning is the second book. So I read the first book uh, in quarantine, right at the beginning of quarantine, and then Aurora Burning came out during quarantine. It came out at the beginning of May. So I've been waiting for it uh, from the library. I've been, it's been on hold for like forever. So hopefully in the next few weeks I get it so I can start reading. So if you love things about space, if you love science fiction, if you love a lot of technology, you'll love this series. So again, this is the second book if you like any of those things I just said, read Aurora Rising, Aurora Burning is the second book. And first, the bad news. An ancient evil, you know, your standard costume, consume all life in the galaxy deal, is about to be unleashed. The good news, Squad 312 is standing by to save the day. They've just got to take care of a few small distractions first. So without giving you any spoilers, in the first book, this squad of this group of friends, kind of misfit friends, they come across this consume all life in the galaxy thing. Can't tell you what it is. I'm not going to tell you where it came from, what's going to happen with it. But this second book is a continuation. Of that. Aurora, who's on the cover of the first book, is one of the characters, a very mysterious character with a very mysterious background. So hopefully we discover a little bit more about her in the second book as well. Starry Eyes was one that was not on my list originally, but a bunch of my friends uh, told me that I should read it. And as part of my quarantine video, it deals with a road trip. Ever since last year's homecoming dance, best friends turned best enemies, Zori and Lennon, have made an art of avoiding each other. It doesn't hurt that their families are the modern day Californian version of the Montagues and Capulets. But when a group camping trip goes south, Zori and Lennon find themselves stranded in the wilderness, alone together what could go wrong. So a road trip, enemies turned maybe lovers, I don't know, I'll we'll find out. The crossover is one that of course has been in the library, a lot of you have read it, a lot of you have raved about this book, and believe it or not, I have never read it. I've read other Kwame Alexander books, but I've not read the crossover, I don't know how that happened. So I'm trying to read a couple novels in verse, which means that it's not written like a regular book, it's written almost like in poem form, but it still tells a story. So this, the crossover, is again in verse form. So this is a book that's been on my list for a long time. And I couldn't believe I hadn't read it yet. But from your recommendations, I'm going to be reading it this summer. There is a second book out, The Rebound. It's not quite a sequel. It deals with another character that's in the crossover. So think of it more like a companion novel than uh, a sequel. To it. But it does deal with characters that are in the crossover. Winterwood is another one that I got from an owl crate. So this has been in on my list for a long time. It's been actually sitting on my desk shelf for a really long time. 
Okay, be careful of the dark, dark wood, especially the woods surrounding the town of Furhaven. Some say these woods are magical, haunted even. Rumored to be a witch, only Nora Walker knows the truth. She and the Walker women before her have always shared a special connection with the woods. And it's this special connection that leads Nora to Oliver Huntsman, the same boy who disappeared from the camp for wayward boys weeks ago and in the middle of the worst snowstorm in year. He should be dead, but here he is alive and left in the woods with no memory of the time he'd been missing. So a lit, there's some magic in there, obviously. There is some uh, mystery, but there's also maybe some elements that I'm not expecting. So I'm very excited to read this. I love the movie Practical Magic growing up, and a lot of people say that this is very reminiscent or very similar to Practical Magic. So I can't wait to read this. So that is my goal, my minimum goal. I want to read at least 10 books. Obviously, there's a ton of other books out there that I'd love to read this summer, but I'm going to start with those 10. So now's a good time to figure out hmm, what your goal is going to be. And if you decide to make a goal, whether it be five books, two books, 10 books, 30 books, that would be really crazy. But make that goal and then share it with me. You can send it to me via email and then you can tell me all about this goal and maybe I'll make some recommendations for you. So once again, thank you for watching What is Mrs. Wallace Reading? And I'll see you next time, folks.